As we said earlier, an SLO draws a line at which, to the best of your knowledge, users start to become unhappy with your service because it is too unreliable. But everyone in your organization working on the service, product managers, developers, SREs, and executives, need to know both where that line is and what happens when it is crossed. The worst thing to have in any outage scenario is people arguing about the course of action to take. The first step is to document your shiny new SLO. What do we mean by documentation anyway? Well, if you have or are planning to build a system that monitors your SLIs and SLOs, that system is going to need to know where you've set your SLO. But simply programming and configuring it in your monitoring system isn't enough. Recording metadata about the rationale and implementation of your SLO is essential so that everyone who works on your service can understand and reason about the impact of an SLO miss. We recommend your documentation include some justification for why the threshold is where it is, why the SLIs are appropriate for measuring the SLO, any monitoring data deliberately included or excluded from the SLIs. For example, not counting HTTP 503s as errors because they are retried by the load balancer. Also, it's important for your SLOs to have owners, people who are responsible for maintaining the documentation and ensuring the SLO stays meaningful and accurate. New SLOs often take a few cycles of refinement before they are committed to, so you should record whether the SLO is in development, is being measured or tested, or is paging someone. And since SLOs are intended to change over time, keeping track of previous data and why thresholds and justifications were changed is very useful too. Now, you'll probably be keeping your monitoring system's configuration in a version control system. So capturing all these pieces of information as metadata in the same configuration file is a great solution that keeps everything in the same place. This helps prevent divergence of documented thresholds from ones that are active in the monitoring systems and increases the chances of metadata being updated alongside monitoring changes. You can even use commit hooks in your version control system to enforce that configuration changes also contain metadata changes.